that can inform you as an instructor to create more, um, you know, just effective learning spaces. We're going to go over chapters one, two, three, and six and seven today somewhat. It's infused in here, but I wanted to let you all know that so that you could know, hey, Carl said this, let me dig deeper. Let me actually get this information and operate with it from my own view, because I'm just kind of giving it to you from, from my vantage point, how learning works. So these concepts blend learning theory or student development theory with some of the best that we know from actual evidence-based and research in scholarships of, te of teaching and learning, which I think is really, really awesome. Um, I've, had the for I've been fortunate enough to work with pretty much all these people, Susan and, and my, well, uh, Dr. Ambrose and um, DePietro. I have been able to give workshops and things with them, so I've been able to get a little window into the information, which is great, but I'm not like part of their crew or anything, so I want to take <laughs> Um, so, so right here, first, first, first we're going to start with some student development theory. Um, we're getting into the science of the students now, right? <laughs> some of you are exposed, some of you might not be exposed. This is a, such a great place to start for me because students' level of development interacts with their social, emotional, and their intellectual climate of the course, and it impacts their learning. So each of these nodes or pieces here impact the learning, but sometimes we just start here. We're going to talk about this a little later, and maybe if you've been exposed, you can read a lot about that. But how many conversations have you been talking about the student learning or even the climate and how you impact the climate? So that's what we're doing here. There's going to be a quiz on this at your table in the oh. three slides. <laughs> you are not going to be graded, but you're going to definitely be evaluated and assessed. So I'm going to, I'm going to move from the front so y'all can see it. But um, this is um, intellectual development. Yes, see, I told you all I couldn't stand in front. I'll go back. Sorry. Uh, it was just a little hard for me. Stages of intellectual development, um, Perry scheme. The theory um, is as, I'll, I'll kind of try to make it as, uh, to package it as tightly as possible. Not only in your classrooms are you dealing with learning diversity, right, and physical, visible things you can see, you're dealing with an intellectual diversity that is present at any given time that you're in a classroom where learners are negotiating how they view knowledge and information, whether they see knowledge as Black or white, that's right or wrong. I know some of you have been there, and sometimes this can be contextual depending on what we're talking about, right? Like politics and religion, you can be very, this is right, this is wrong, versus some of these other stages. So that's dualism, right and wrong, absolute black and white. To multiplicism or multiplicity, where, you know, I mean, you might have been here, or you might be here now, or you might have seen this out here with some things where it's, okay, you know, there are many different, you know, rivers or streams that lead to the same ocean, or many different, you know, possible answers, so, that's just how it is. So they're looking at you as like, why is he wanted this way? Because there's many different answers to me. Relativism, 